back to another video here on Free Will Photos. Today, we're gonna be doing a quick edit of some flowers. Now, I know it's cold outside, and when I seen these flowers, I said, you know what? I just wanna edit some flowers and kinda of fast forward to spring because winter time can kinda of drag and spring is nice, so hopefully you get a little bit of uh, excitement and joy from seeing some flowers and looking forward to spring of 2024. Now, I am using All One Photo Raw, so if you wanna pick that up, save a little bit of money, consider using my coupon code, FREEWILLPHOTOS20. It'll save you some money when you check out at no extra cost. I do make a small commission off of every sale, but again, no extra cost to you. So let's go ahead and jump into the computer and take a look at this flower. All right, so as I mentioned, here is the flower that we're going to be editing today. Now, this is what I came into the editing bay with, and this is a snapshot of what we're going to try to recreate. Now, I'll show you real quick because, you know, it's a quick edit. I use Brilliance AI. Let me start with develop. I use Brilliance AI, and then I jumped over into effects. I added a glow, a split tone, and a color enhancer. Now, as usual, I'm probably not going to make the exact same edit that you see here, which is why I make the snapshot, because when I test these things out and I like something, I want to make sure that I can keep it and have it for later. So let's go ahead and jump back to our original. And we'll go ahead and get started. Now, as I mentioned, the very first thing that I did was I just selected Brilliance AI. Now, if you haven't caught my video on Brilliance AI, I highly recommend that you go take a look at that. And with the out of the box Brilliance AI, I think it works great, at least for my preferences. I shouldn't say out of the box because mileage does vary. This is one of those tools you have to mess around with and see what you like. But this is the original, and then this is what tone, uh, and I think it's modifying a little bit of the color. Let's take a peek. This is what tone and color is doing to the image. And I'm okay with what it's doing here because again, I added my own color enhancer. So I'm gonna tweak the colors to my own liking here in a little bit. Now really quickly, I understand Brilliance AI, everyone's gonna get some different results here. But if you check out my video on preferences, I have it linked in the description box, then maybe it'll help you with identifying how to use it in your own workflow and making those preferences really work for you. Now, let's go ahead and jump back into the computer and continue the edit. Now that we have everything situated with Brilliance AI, we can jump over to the effects tab. And the very first thing that I wanted to do was throw a color enhancer on here. And the reason why is because I believe in the background here, it just needs to be a little bit less saturated, if you will. So there's two ways that you could do this. You click the little drop down, click adjust saturation, and then grab the eye picker tool, and then just click and drag that down. And it's selecting my yellows because greens and yellows, they do have a similar uh, hue. And then if I wanted to, I can also come into my greens because it may not select them, but I know that, that to the eye that's green, I can pull down on my saturation and my brightness, all right? Uh, the other way, let me just go ahead and reset this, is I could look at it and say, okay, this looks green. I'll come over to my greens. And what I like to do is increase saturation just to see what's happening, making drastic changes. Because if you look at it, it is making some change to the greens, but not a whole lot. If I go to the yellows and I do the same thing, I can see that way more vividly. So I know that the color that I'm trying to manipulate in the background here is in the yellows. So when you do this though, you wanna make sure that your main subject doesn't have the same color because it's going to impact this over the entire image. Now the beauty of working on a effect layer is the fact that you have a mask. I'm not gonna be doing any masking today because I think that the level of desaturation and the brightness that I'm gonna pull down, it all works out well. And that's why I only had one color enhancer. But just know that you do have more flexibility when you work this way. The next thing that I wanna do 
after I've gotten my background the way that I want it to, because I don't want the focus to be on the background, right? I told you we're editing a photo of flowers. It should be evident that we're editing a photo of flowers uh, and the flower should be evident to the viewer that that's what I was taking a photo of. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on my reds because there's a little bit of red here in uh, this part of the, the little flower. So what I'm going to do is increase the saturation in the reds and you'll see how that starts to pop. Now, be careful that you're not zoomed in when you're doing these color adjustments because you want to see how the color is impacting over the entire image. So I only zoomed in to show you where I was focusing, but I want to stay zoomed out. And sometimes you may even want to go one more level zoomed out just so that way you can see the entire image in one go, all right? If you're working on a really, really big monitor, then consider that. I'll just zoom back in to fit the screen for the sake of tutorial purposes. Uh, and let me just move this back and forth as I increase the uh, saturation on my reds. You can see this just becomes a little bit more punchy and vivid and vibrant, and I like it, all right? So now, I may need to mess around with the brightness on these a little bit. Maybe I'll make them a little bit brighter uh, and push them a little bit towards the orange and then bring the orange and push that a little bit towards the red. And you can see how that's impacting the overall flower. And honestly, what I'm trying to do is just get well-defined colors in the image. This isn't something that you have to spend a whole lot of time on, but you could absolutely spend a good amount of time. So I think that that looks good. It's always a good practice to hit the before and the after. And I think that that looks good. Here's what we came into the editing bay with. A little washed out, dark image. Now it's brighter, a little bit more joyful. And now what I need to do is really bring in some of those warm tones. And that's where the split tone filter comes in. So. We'll go ahead and throw a split tone filter in there and I'm going to start with my highlights. Now, when it comes to highlights, I think that they should be uh, somewhere in these warmer tones. So, or at least that's what I used in the previous uh, snapshot. And so maybe something around here. You can always come back and change this. This is the reason why I really enjoy using the split tone filter uh, and working with effects on my images. Now I want to come to the shadows, I'm going to brighten that up because I don't want this to be a dark and moody image. I'm not even going for like crazy contrasty like I normally do. And what I want to use is not a complementary color because that would be a color opposite of what I've selected. I want to use something that's a little bit offset and closer to the color that I selected. So I want to come maybe somewhere between this pink and red transition uh, and I want that in my shadows just a touch and this is almost uh, an analogous I think I'm saying that right um, color scheme but not quite because there is some separation right uh, this area is pretty far from that area but they're roughly in the same saturation level or zone now where this effect really starts to sell itself is how you blend the balance between the warm tone and, or I'm sorry, the highlight and the shadow. Now, this photo, I believe, has more highlights in it. So I want to kind of lean it towards the highlight side because that's where I'm going to get that warmth. And then I'm going to come down to my blending. And I chose Lighten on the last one. And now that I'm looking at it, it looks a little way too washed out. So maybe I want to pull this down, uh, but I don't really care for that. So what I'm going to do is just pull down on my opacity a slight bit here. And I'll turn this off and turn it back on. And you can see that it's given like this desaturated, faded, uh, black and white look. Or I'm sorry. As you can see, it's given this desaturated, faded look. And I actually kind of like it because this works out pretty well. Now, the last step that I'm gonna do is throw on a glow filter. And the reason I'm doing this is the 
for me, the glow filter, it kind of takes the edge off of an image and really just makes it a little bit more soft and gentle. And when I look at these flowers, that's what I think of. Uh, it's really like essentially a blur filter that I'm adding to this particular image. But I really enjoy what I get out of adding the glow filter to this image. So turning it off and on, you can see how it just kind of smooths everything out and makes it look more cohesive because right now it looks kind of underdeveloped, underexposed. And then when I throw the glow filter on, it's like, oh yeah, everything seems to make perfect sense. I don't know. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comment section below. Let me go ahead and save this and we'll call this edit two. And the moment of truth, we'll see how well I did with recreating the thing. So this is the one that I created earlier. You can see that I had a much darker background here. And this is the one that I just created, not as dark of a background. This is one of the fun things for me, recreating an image and seeing if I can even recreate it. Um, so maybe what I could do is come in here, come to the greens, pull down on the brightness there and pull down. Well, I already pulled down on the brightness there. So uh, maybe I can just shift that over to the green. And in develop, I can come over to tone and color and pull down on my blacks. And that kind of helps with that darkening effect. So I can get it close to what I did before, but I don't really care to recreate everything that I've done. And this is one of the reasons why I don't fully share my files with everyone, because I just want you to go and experience this on your own images, test out the techniques that I share, and then see what happens with your photography. With that, I want you to let me know in the comment section below what you think about the edit and how you can use this in your own photography. If you got questions, just let me know in the comment section, send me an email, come over to my website, just get at me. There's so many ways that you can contact me. Now, if you got questions about the split tone filter, I'll leave a video in the description box below, as well as the preferences to Brilliance AI video that I made, um, or the video on Brilliance AI preferences that I made. So that way you can kind of get up and running with that. I know that that has been a point of friction in the community, um, and I just want to help level the bubbles as best I can. So until next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.